Hey y'all, Sarah Luhu here, and we are back again with Spirit Hunter NG. So last episode, things started to get a bit more creepy. <laughs> um, let's see, we started investigating, you know, this Miruko mansion again, and we got a D-mail from, you know, D-man, and found out the demon's actually dead, and he's a ghost that's kind of sending us these cards from the afterlife and everything. It's kind of a weird situation there. <laughs> All right, but we had that happen and then we got about investigating things a bit more. We found a, we found a new tape. I'm sorry, I need to just, <laughs> we found, I do not like this hallway. We found a new tape, um, tried to play the tape and said the tape rerouted to the phone and we heard the sounds of a girl getting her arms and legs amputated and the voice of a man apologizing and can yeah, to keep you alive but I mean it might be hard without all those limbs and all that and uh, after that we went to try and collect the tape from the radio and found a creepy ass doll on the bed that looked like a yellow girl Everything. She had blood on her and she had a mask on her. We touched the blood, used blood in the tree, found out that she's starving. So we gave her some rotten fruit and she dropped her mask and took the mask, hung it on the wall. And that revealed a hidden door that presumably goes to the attic. But first we have to go through this hallway. And it says there was uh, sounds of footsteps from the roof. And I don't like this area. <laughs> but that's where we're at right now. I don't like this place. <laughs> this is a bad house beyond that door. I open the door and I'm shocked to be looking at the front entrance of Mirukum residence. Uh, fuck, we're in a damn loop. We're trapped in a spirit hell. <laughs> crap. Crap, 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 crap. What? Uh, hold on. Wait, wait a second here. Is this really possible, huh? I mean, I don't believe it either, but fuck this. <laughs> it's actually happening. Hold on a second. Keep calm, chill out, take a look around. When I notice next is that the secret door I thought we opened earlier is now closed. Seems like the spirits don't want us going back there, maybe. Everything else seems to be the same. Why is the entrance to the secret passage closed again? I don't have a damn clue. I'm positive that we entered the secret passageway and opened the door. Something happened the moment we went through the door. Yeah, I wonder, could it be I, a creepy ass ghost thing just jump scare us? Yeah, yeah, it did. That thought gives me an idea. Hey, we entered from the door located at the front entrance, right? So what happens if we try to leave? Uh, like doing the opposite of what we just did. Yeah, if we end up back at the secret passage by doing that. I really did not want to think about it, but doesn't it seem like we'd be stuck in here? That's bad. Come on. <laughs> Let's uh, try going outside. I rush to open the door and once going outside, I see the unchanged Miruku residence once again. Okay, good. We can leave. Huh. <sighs> That's a relief. Scared me there for a second. You and me both, man. Rose, our lookout, looks at the two of us with a confused expression on her face. <laughs> you two certainly look like you've been having fun. Something happened? Yeah, you could say that. You see, uh... I retell what happened when we went through the secret passageway. Really? I can't believe it, but it must be true of your saying it. Piecing all the information together, it seems that when you enter the secret passage, you enter a different Miruku residence. A different Miruku residence? How's it different? <laughs> I'm not- I'm sorry, I just caught this side of my cat. She's like moose sitting on the table- on the- not the table, the bed. 
and everything, and she's been in here since before I started recording. I think she's concerned from the screaming. Not screaming, but eating, but still. She's just like giving me such a side eye right now. Anywho. I'm not sure. It could be in a different time situation. Just, um, some specific state. We traveled to a Miruku residence in a different state by entering the door is what I mean. If we had to come up with an explanation, that's the hypothesis that makes the most sense. Could the clock have something to do with it? I mean, the D-man did have us messing with that. Assuming that you're correct, how's that even possible? There are some extremely powerful curses and thoughts that sometimes cause phenomena like this. Stairs that you, uh, take you to the same floor or an intersection that leads to the same place. These are examples I've heard from someone who actually experienced them firsthand. I, I don't believe that at all. It's exactly what happened in the Red <laughs> DLC, so... Uh, but I guess I had to since it's actually happening, huh? If we're experiencing the phenomenon, then it means that there are great dangers ahead. Are you going to continue investigating? I'm fully prepared to face those dangers. I'm not, but hey, gotta do it for Ozzy, right? I've gotten through it up till now. This is nothing. No, this is a bit more than what it was before, so... Atta boy. That's the one thing I like about you that I like. Alright, then let's continue our investigation. Don't just materialize like that, Rose. How about how about you come with me, darling? Oh, you're back. Yeah, let's see how she does. Yeah, look out now, Ben. All right, see you later. Stick to the mission, you hear? All right, let's get going. <sighs> Round two, bitches. Can I hang the mask? No. Alright, pheasant. Doesn't seem like the secret door is going to open. Wait, what? Well, I guess we take a look around. See if dolls changed. The moment I enter the room, I hear something from the back. Is that... A boombox? The boombox. Hear the button being pressed once again and the noise from the tape stops. Didn't we... Didn't we get the tape out earlier? <sighs> Shit on this. Taking a look, I see there's a cassette tape in the boombox. I'm here to help, ghosty. I've saved two already, just let me help you. I ejected and I noticed that it's a tape labeled A. Again? It's an important clue. We have to listen to it, even if you don't want to. Yeah. Alright, I rewind the tape and press the play button. And immediately a shuddering voice echoed. It hurts. Give it back. Ugh, more screaming. Girl screaming fills the room, and then it finally goes quiet. We hear silence for a bit, then... Hmm, I see. Don't worry, it's just your legs. I'm knowledgeable in treatment as well, but now... The man's calm voice is cut off by the tape stopping. I double check to make sure the tape's done, and then eject it. Why am I keeping all the tapes? Well, oh yeah, this is the first one you've heard, isn't it, Rose? Rose, sorry. That was excruciating. Yeah, seriously. Screams were buried in my ear. Why are just your legs and knowledgeable in the fields of treatment important? Thinking about it, the owner of the mansion, Yakumo Miruku, was aspiring to be a surgeon. Is the male voice on the tape Miruku? Hmm. 
Dining room, maybe? Phone? Fuck. Oh, I hate these things. Hi, Missy. Doll again. I know this doll wasn't here before. I'm starting to be convinced of Rose's theory about the other Miruku residents. Taking a look at the clothes it's wearing, I can see a light stain on the abdomen. Seems like this doll is a girl too. Sorry, there's a light stain on the abdomen. Looking closer, I see the stain is red. Try to take off the mask, but it feels like it's stuck on really well. All right, blood tree, do your thing. Maybe I'll give it a try. I slowly breathe out and bring my fingertip closer to the stain on the clothes. I'm hearing what sounds like crying again. Really? That sounded like a giggle. And from afar, a girl's voice saying, I'm cold, Mom. This time I hear words I can understand. Cold? Is that what she was saying? Yeah, I heard it clearly this time. Cold, Mom. Unfortunately, I don't see a heater here. If we can't do anything about it here, then we'll just have to carry her somewhere we can. Mm. I guess we'll tuck her into bed. I feel like I probably need you, Rosé. <laughs> Given the whole mom part. Carry the doll. Carry it. We'll tuck you in, sweetheart. <laughs> no matter how terrifying you are. I guess I'll do it. Here we go. Stay myself and carry the doll. Feels heavier than an actual child. Careful. Dolls won't help you lift them. They'll probably feel heavier than a child. Makes sense. Yeah, it definitely feels that way. Alright, now the question is, where should we carry it to? Carry the doll. You can investigate while carrying the doll. I eat this. Straight to the bedroom. Entering the bedroom, my eyes immediately shift toward the bed. Those blankets are obviously high quality. I'm sure she won't be cold in that. Alright, there it is. I'll lay it down on the bed, um, in the back. You move the blanket aside. As you wish. Okay, here you go. I lay the doll on the sheets and place the duvet over it. Now let's see how she feels. She shouldn't feel cold anymore. Let me ask her again. Put my fingertip under the blanket. She probably still wants her mom. I heard a crying voice again. And that voice... It's cold, mom. It's no use. She's saying the same thing. Oh, wait! I realized I was overlooking something important. Mom. Huh? I think she wants a mother? Hmm, well, don't look at me. You're closer than I am, right? <laughs> well, the dolls definitely isn't satisfied. Now, what should we do? Rose, hug the damn doll. The doll seems to want a mother. Hey, Rose, sorry, but can you handle this? <laughs> um, Rose grimaces. See, oh, I hate it when it does that. I hate it when it just skips dialogue on its own. <laughs> But I have an image to uphold. Who's going to see it but me? Sorry, but we really don't have time to care about things like that right now. Fine. But only because you're my disciple. I know, I'm the one asking you to do this, but... What are we supposed to do here? Essentially, we need the doll to feel some motherly warmth. I think an imitation of breastfeeding would be best. Can't you just hug her? Wait, seriously, you're going to... No, I'm not actually going to feed her. I'll just, uh, sleep next to it, lower to sleep, just like mothers do. Here, like this. Slipping under the blanket next to the doll, Rosé speaks to it as she rubs its head. Oh, you must have been so scared. It's alright now. Mom's here with you. There's nothing to worry about anymore. The scary dream is over now. Hush now. Go to sleep. I hear a clack from the mask. Just like the baby turtles. Hey, Osborne. Rosé crawls out of the blanket. She's holding a dog mask. 
And to fuck this hallway. It just came off on its own. Maybe this means that the doll has been released from her thoughts. Now that she mentions it, I remember the mask coming off on its own when I gave that other doll the fruit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, and there's this as well. A hand towel? What's this? It was wrapped around the doll's mouth. I assume it must have been used as a gag. The screams I heard in the tape replay themselves in my head. I pick up the doll from the bed. Rosé helps me and we put it back in the living room where it was originally. Why, though? Oh, I don't like poking around this house. <laughs> okay, let's look at this. Silk washcloth that was wrapped around... Who uses a silk washcloth? What the hell? <laughs> that was wrapped around the mouth of the doll with the dog mask on. Damage to the fabric, hints that it's been used for something it wasn't intended for. Place the dog mask on the frame. Let's go deeper. Once again, the entrance to the secret passage appears. Hmm, as expected. If our working theory is correct, there should be another Miruku residence ahead. That's right. Come on, let's go. Yeah, no, I'm fine with heart attacks. Not poking around anymore. As we thought, the door in the secret passageway connects to the front entrance of the residence. The entrance doesn't look any different aside from the passageway entrance being closed. <sighs> I don't like being in here. Stereo shoe cabinet. Open it. Couldn't find anything. Okay, just want to make sure. When I enter the room, I hear. The sound of someone knocking on the front entrance door. Who's there? Is it Ben? No, he has a cell phone. Let's go check, just in case. Okay, because we already had one in this room. We already had one in the living room. So now for the foyer? Going outside. Ben is standing around and being a good lookout. What? Looking for something? No, hey. Someone come by just now? The hell? What are you talking about? I mentioned the sound that I just heard. Kind of felt like someone was delivering the mail or something. So I uh, came to check just in case. Obviously nobody's been here. If the knock was that loud, then I would have heard it too, right? You didn't hear it? Nope. Well, considering everything else going on with this place, must be some sort of reason. Yeah, spiritual, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe you should uh, take a quick look outside. Yeah, I'll do that. Like, like in the mailbox? <laughs> Digging around, my hand bumps into something. It's a cassette tape labeled S and a sparkler. Hmm. I understand the tape, but why is there a sparkler in here? Looking closer, I see scorch marks on the tip of the firework. Looks like it was lit, but the flames went out before it reached the end. Well, the obvious answer would be, uh, harassment. <laughs> he probably didn't talk to the neighbors much. I see. I don't think it's a funny joke, though, Rosé. <laughs> You just want to be sure, look around, make sure everything's cool. Coolio, coolio, coolio. A mystery attic. Nothing in the sky. Alright, back inside. Boom box, boom box, summon the third doll. <sighs> I put tape us into the boombox, I press the play button and let out a sigh. Round three! There's a long period of idle sounds and then a scream along with loud noises. A loud noise, sorry. How could you? Why? The sound makes me gnaw my lips. 
I never thought it'd be so stressful just to listen to screams. The girl repeatedly screams, give it back. Don't want to imagine what she wants back. Soon the scream grew distant and I hear a man's voice once again. Hmm, I see. No need to worry, it's just one arm. Let's take our time and cut it while I treat it. What? Sound cuts off there. Huh. I think I finally understand what this man was doing to these girls. It's clear from the other tapes that he's been cutting off the hands and legs of the victims. D don't you mean arms? He's even saying, well, I treat it, so... He's, he's not trying to murder the girls. But we don't just crawl out like that. <laughs> so he has some... To have some objective that's making him cut off their arms and legs. I don't get it. Why the hell would anyone need to cut the arms and legs off of anyone? Obviously, this isn't a question that makes any sane that any sane person can answer. It is met by a suffocating silence. Let's continue investigating. I get the feeling that we are approaching the answer to that question. Okay, Boo's sticking around. She's just sitting at the base of my chair. <sighs> Wait. Did I, get, did I get my tape out? Yeah, I could probably just check. Uh... Yeah, I still have my tape. Alright. Hi, doll. God. You're naked. So what's your deal? I find another unfamiliar doll sitting in front of the coffee table. Here we go again. Something about this doll immediately jumps out as different. Is this one naked? This doll does a, hey, I have clothes for you. It doesn't seem like it's wearing clothes. And just like the other dolls, there's a red stain on it. So in the monkey mask, maybe I can hear this doll's voice. I take a deep breath, move my fingertip towards the stain on its back. I hear some sniffling and crying, then I begin to hear a quiet voice. I want to go to school. Poor thing. They all just want to go back to something safe. They never make this easy, do they? I think the voice I heard was saying I want to go to school, but how would I make that wish come true? Well, I could start with this. I take out the sailor uniform and put it on the doll. That'll help. Putting clothes on the doll ends up being a lot tougher than I thought. Working together, the two of us finally managed to push the hands and legs through. My goodness, this stylish job is exhausting. This is probably tougher because this heavy doll isn't helping us at all. I step back and look at how it turned out. The ticking of the clock and silence continue to drone on and on. It's weird, nothing's happening. Is a school uniform not enough? Well, why didn't we take her to school? Seriously? I don't want to think about taking the doll out of here and taking it to a school. Close to school is pretty far from here. While I'm out of ideas, it'll take me a while to come up with something else. Looks like Rosé has given up. I don't really think the band is going to have any ideas, but... You can't investigate this with your current partner. Change partners at the entrance. Ban, you're a journalist. You know smart stuff. I'm sure you have some kind of information to give. <sighs> God, man, this place sucks. Hey, so how'd it go in there? It went terrible. One sec. Alright, sorry about that. Anyhow. Switch partners. Ben, you're up. Alright. Rose, you're on lookout. No problem, just leave it to me. I'll reply, I'll see you both later. Alright, let's go. And then we go. Ben, teach the doll. Be a sensei. <laughs> Your turn, man. The doll continues to stay silent. Mask still stuck to its face. What more can we do to grant this doll's wish of wanting to go to school? Hey, Osborne, sit next to her. 
Huh? What are you talking about, old man? Listen, just shut up, sit down. Also, I'm not Ban. From now on, you call me Mr. Ban. Got that? Huh? Uh, say, say what? <laughs> Oh, it feels ridiculous. I sit down next to the doll as Ben ordered. Alright, let's review what we learned in our history lesson last time. So when did Columbus make it to America? Osborne, what's the answer? Ben pretending to be a teacher calls on me like I'm a student in his class. What the hell? Um, uh, something about the ocean blue... Ah, oh, right, it's 1492, right? Good, I'm glad you reviewed what we learned. <laughs> All right, next question. I'll ask you. Ben points to the doll and throws out a question. What year was the answer, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation signed? However, the doll continues to stay silent. Che, Ben, I guess I can help keep this going for a bit. Yo, Mr. Ben, don't you think that question is too difficult for an elementary schooler? Yeah, good point. My bad. You're doing a terrible job as a teacher. <laughs> what do you say? You're wrong. That's no way to talk to a teacher. Heh, what kind of teacher calls his student a runt, jeez. That's it, come here, you little. Oh, what? Want to fight? You fraud. Then the next moment. With a clack sound, the doll's mask comes off. Hey, did you, did you just see that? <laughs> no, no way, all it took was a half-assed act like that. What are you talking about? This was a class lesson, no matter how you slice it. I was teaching my ass off there. <laughs> I'll have you know that I've got a teaching license from my college days. One, it trusted. Well, as it happens, you don't count. Anyway, it worked. You should show some more gratitude. Obtained monkey mask. Yeah, right. Hey, something else on the floor. Shine the light around my feet, I see. Hard shoes. Don't know about the shoes, but this mask is probably horror. Yep, probably. Oh, uh, let's give it a try. Into the mouth of hell we go. Can I put the shoes in here? <laughs> hmm. Take out the hard shoes. But how am I supposed to use it? Okay. Fun, fun times. Alright, but we're out of time for today. So, thoughts and opinions. <laughs> well, I do not like the dolls and believe them to be the creepiest of bitches. <laughs> uh, I do feel quite bad for them. Like, seriously, why are they so creepy? It's the masks. I really don't like the mask, which is something I didn't realize was a thing for me, but apparently it is. <laughs> I do not care for them. They're like extra, extra creepy. Um, but I do think it's, you know, rather sweet. Like, again, it's just kind of a extension of Hazuki's interactions with the turtles at the, in the Urashima woman case, you know, with Rose comforting the one doll. And really that's what, you know, Ben and Ozzy were doing there too. And anything, cause it's not that she wanted to, you know, just dress the part or, you know, hear a lesson or anything. She wanted the, you know, proper feel of, you know, school, like the back and forth between the teacher and the problem student, you know, having friends in class and all that kind of stuff. That, that's what she was really longing for. Instead of just the fun days of school life, right? <laughs> I don't know, it was sweet. I don't know what we're going to find in the attic, but I don't, I don't want to know. <laughs> this is just a really sad one already. Like, I'm pretty sure it's, you know, still going to stand to, you know, my original theory that he was trying to make sacrifice dolls out of these girls. Because, I mean, why else include the dolls when, you know, the dolls are such a big part of the main plot anyway, right? And so it has to have some kind of tie-in. But why is he only going for the arms and legs? Like, that's the mystery part here. Because it's almost like...
Because you would need the girls themselves to be the sacrifices, wouldn't you? The arms and legs suggest he's building something like with the cannon soldier. But with the cannon soldier, the only human part that was taken was the head. And so the rest were like cut off pieces from the Buddha statues and everything, weren't they? Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Because they all have joints and stuff at the arms as well. Maybe he was trying to, like, reverse it? Or do a reverse version of it? But why the focus on little girls? Because I assumed it was perverse initially, but... I don't know, it's... You know, he sounds so clinical about it. With the recordings. Oh well. We'll find out as we go on, I'm sure, but... <sighs> this one's heroin. <laughs> Alright, um... Until next time, like and subscribe if you want to, and thank you for watching.